Tamam. Yes, class. Good evening. Good evening, ma'am. All right. So yesterday we had seen certain cases of magnetic force. Magnetic force was what? Q, V cross V. This we had seen. Any doubts in this? Charge multiplied by what? The cross product of velocity and magnetic field. Now in this we have four cases. So I think three cases we had already covered. One last case was left. Let us cover that. So in this uh, first case was when the angle was zero degree. Angle between what? Angle is always made between the vectors which are having their cross products or dot products. Like here it was the cross product of velocity and magnetic field. So velocity and magnetic field, if they are making an angle of zero degree, then you say it is the first case which where there, there will be no change in the path and what? Force will be zero. Second case is 180 degree when the motion of the charge particle is exactly opposite to the magnetic field and it means v and b velocity and magnetic field both are these making angle of 180 degree fine so again here force will be zero and if there is no force there will not not be any change in the path of the charge particle so if the question comes what is the path of the charge particle do mention this point that there will be no change in the path of the charge particle for first and second cases Third case we had seen where velocity was perpendicular to magnetic field. So we had to use our right hand thumb rule and we saw different different directions. 
and we could conclude the fact that the centripetal force was provided by the magnetic force. So radius formula, time period formula, and frequency formula, all these formula along with the angular frequency formula we have seen. If the third part comes, if the third case comes as a subjective question, not as a numerical, then do mention those points that the path of the charged particle will be circular because the force is acting towards the center. So path will be circular. And if it is for three marker or four marker, so accordingly mention all these formula. But usually question come from the third part as numerical, like this question we had seen. Now the last case, if the particle is at an angle, fine. If the particle is at an angle, this is a charged particle now this is at a random angle this is making an angle theta this is velocity this is the magnetic field so magnetic field lines are there and the charged particle is moving randomly this is what angle this angle this is not zero degree this angle is not 180 degrees and this angle is not 90 degrees at least you are sure about this fact because had it been any of these angles we would have got the other cases now it's at a random angle what we'll do we'll try to resolve the velocity so again i'm repeating this i have repeated many times because this is a basic physics for you all whenever angle is made with an axis that axis gets the component of trigonometry as cosine means this axis will be having v cos theta and the perpendicular one to it will be having v sine theta so this is v perpendicular and this is v parallel Fine, be perpendicular and be parallel. Now, this is what will be the velocity of this component. One velocity is moving upwards, other velocity is moving forward. But what will be the path of the charged particle? We are actually studying the path of the charged particle in motion. So, path of the charged particle, what should be the impact of the path of the charged particle? One velocity is moving like this, other velocity is moving upwards, or so should it cancel each other? Will there be any motion of the charge or not? Now, see, both the velocities are responsible responsible for an independent motion. For example, if you look at this perpendicular parallel velocity, what happens? This parallel velocity, this is straight. So this gives, gives us straight motion. A straight path is provided. Fine. And regarding the perpendicular, perpendicular velocity we have seen in the third case also that provides a circular motion. So straight and circular. Circular motion will be there but it will also be moving straight. Reason? Because P parallel is also here. So it's like circular motion is there. This is because of V perpendicular. Plus forward motion is also there due to V parallel. So ultimately it would be circle, then translatory motion, then a circular motion, then a little forward circular motion. It's like overlapping circles. So this is what? This is the combined motion that we get, which we call as helical. So it will be like this motion of a spring in a spring like manner, you say. Circular motion will be provided by the perpendicular velocity and the translatory forward push will be provided by the parallel component of velocity. So when you combine both of these, you will get a helical motion. Fine. So if the fourth case comes, fourth case comes for uh, in your theoretical questions, only no numericals come from here. Numerical come only from your third part. Those formulas, no, no? yesterday we had seen radius, angular frequency, linear frequency, time period, all those formulas. So path will be combination of circular and straight line and it will be a helical. Fine. So quickly note down this fourth part. Then we'll see if magnetic field and electric field both are there, this is when only magnetic field is there. And in electrostatics, we have seen that only electric field was there. What if at a place magnetic field also exists and electric field also exists? That we see. First note down this place.
Now see, magnetic Lorentz force we had studied yesterday. That was only magnetic. We hadn't mentioned electric field anywhere in all the cases that we had studied. There wasn't mention of electric field. Now if electric field is there as well as magnetic field is there. So what will happen? Obviously, electric force will do its work. Magnetic field force will also do its work. So both the forces will exist because both the fields are present. Fine? So electric field is what? For electric field, if just imagine, forget magnetics right now. Just recall your electrostatics. So in electrostatics, what had we seen? We had seen in electrostatics what happens. Electric field is present, a charged particle is moving. So electric force, this becomes charge multiplied by electric field. And yesterday, in magnetic field, when magnetic field, magnetic field when it existed what was the formula of magnetic field that we had seen this was q uh, instead of v cross v i'm writing okay let's write v cross v. q v cross v. these were the two formula that we had seen this is only for electric field and this is only for magnetic field now I am having a field where I am having such a space where electric field also exists and magnetic field also exists. So net force will be what? Net force will be combination of electric field plus magnetic force. Electric force and magnetic force both will combine if you have various forces present at a place. So what is the net force? Net force is the sum of all the forces. Similarly, here, here also electric field plus magnetic field will be there. Now put it in the formula. This is what? This becomes QE plus Q V cross V. Take charge common. So magnetic Lorentz. We, we call this force as Lorentz force only, not magnetic. Last QVB. This is Lorentz, magnetic Lorentz force. This net combined force, this is not magnetic. This is simply Lorentz force. This is Q. E plus B cross. E plus V cross. This is the final formula that you get. All right. So this is what this is simply Lorentz force. Now regarding the direction, we are aware of if in case of electric field. When we are trying to find out the direction for electric field. So for electric field, if a positive charge is moving along the direction of electric field, direction of force is same as that of the electric field for a positive charge particle. For a negatively charged particle like electron or any negative charge particle, reverse the direction. It is opposite. All these topics are part of your electric force. I have sent you the playlist also. Anybody has any doubt, please see to it once and wherever you are not able to understand, ask. And magnetic force we had seen yesterday, right hand side. Using this right hand, we will find it. So wherever it is necessary, we will use it. Uh, let's solve questions. I think you write it down first, then let's solve it together. Let's do one question. Let's practice a question that will be better. See, this question says what? Charge particle is 2 coulomb. Velocity is given. Electric field is given. Magnetic field is given. You have to find out the net force. So net force will obviously, it will be, net force will obviously, it will be because of the both the fields. So here, charge particle is 2 coulomb. Q is 2 coulomb. Velocity is what? I cap minus 2J cap. Electric field is what? 2I cap minus 3J cap. And magnetic field is what? I cap minus J cap minus 5K cap. Right? This much is given to us. Now we have to find out net force. So for net force, we have seen the formula is what? Q. This is electric field plus V cross B. This 
is the formula. So before we put charge into it and we add electric field, let us find out V cross V because the tedious work here is V cross V only because it is the cross product and you need complete determinant system whenever you have Cartesian formula. Yes. All right. If you have doubts in your vectors, let me know. I'll send you the video lectures for from class 11th batches. Because vectors there is over. So now nobody can join it for the backup. I can send you the lecture. So V cross V, determinant system. I cap, J cap, K cap. V, I cap, I can write 1. For J cap, the coefficient of J cap is minus 2. Coefficient of K cap, there is no K cap, so 0. V, magnetic field. This is 1. Coefficient of J cap is minus 1. Coefficient of K cap is minus 5. This is the determinant system. Now, I am finding V cross V. I think in this batch, we have already discussed it. Yes, we have once discussed this. Now, V cross V, firstly, coefficient for I cap. Let's find it. So, whenever you're finding for I cap, Ignore this, ignore I, this. What are you left with? You are left with these four, obliquely downwards, obliquely minus, obliquely upwards. Remember this, obliquely downwards, minus, obliquely upwards. So here, what will it be? See, minus 2 multiplied by minus 5. That gives you 10. So obliquely downwards you have multiplied, minus, obliquely upwards. This is 0. For J cap, we write a negative minus J cap and same thing we are going to do. But for J cap, we'll eliminate, not, we'll not eliminate this. For J cap, we'll eliminate J cap's column. Now you are left with this. Let's multiply these two minus these two. So 1 into minus 5 gives you minus 5. Minus 1 into 0 again gives you 0. Plus k cap, remember we write minus sign for j cap. Now again, for k cap I have to ignore the row of k cap. obliquely downwards minus obliquely upwards, diagonally upwards. This way you multiply it for remembering you can say it in this way. So 1 into minus 1 gives you minus 1. Then a negative sign. 1 into minus 2 gives you minus 2. This much we have. Now I just have to solve this. Ten minus 0, this is 10 I cap. Minus 5 minus J cap. So that becomes plus 5 J cap. And this is what? This becomes 2 minus 1. That is 1 plus K cap. So this is what? This is V cross B only. I have till now obtained V cross B. Now in the main formula, I have to add electric field also. It's E plus V cross B. What was electric field? 2 I cap minus 3 J cap. So electric field is... I cap minus 3J cap. So at least let us write down this E plus V cross. Electric field is 2I cap minus 3J cap plus what is V cross V? 10I cap plus 5J cap plus K cap. So E plus V cross V becomes 2I cap plus this becomes 12J cap, 2I cap plus 10I cap. Minus 3j cap plus 5j cap. That becomes plus 2j cap. And this is k cap here. This is E plus V cross. What was the final formula? You multiply charge with it. Q E plus V cross. Right? Charge is 2 coulomb. So we'll multiply 2 with this. So once you multiply, F net will be what? It will be Q E plus V cross V. So 2 into 12 I cap plus 2 J cap plus K cap. This gives you 24 I cap plus 4 J cap plus 2 K 
cap new brand. This much is your final answer. Any doubts in this? Lorentz force, magnetic Lorentz force, electric field force. Clear? Yes, ma'am. Clear. Not at all.
Ivan. Yes, ma'am. Ma no, no. This is the last topic for today. Force on current carrying conductor placed in magnetic field. If only a single conductor is placed, that we will see today. In the next class, we will see if two parallel conductors are kept. A conductor, current carrying conductor is there, means a wire is there. Let's say this wire is there. So if a wire is there, it is carrying current, it is having certain length. And current that is flowing is I. Length of the conductor is L. Area of the cross section. Cross section means if this is your wire, then area cross section means this. This is what is meant by cross section. Right? So area of the cross section is a number density means number of electrons per unit volume. This is this is a small, very small derivation, easy and small derivation. So volume of the conductor will be what? See, volume of the conductor will be. Area multiplied by the length, that is how we calculate the volume. Area of the cross section, if this is a cylinder, this is L is the length, A is the area of this cross section. So A multiplied by L gives volume. So volume of the conductor becomes AL. So this is valid for a single electron. So you have to find out total number of electrons. One single electron is E, that is it, which is having the electronic charge as 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulombs. So if total electrons that are present within this wire, within this conductor of volume AL, that will be simply multiply whatever number of electrons you are having by the volume. One electron, two electron, it will ultimately be the complete conductor. So total electrons will be NAL, number density of electrons multiplied by the volume. Now F is equal to E V cross B. This is basically this force, magnetic force. That is Q V cross B. From here, see charge will be minus E. Minus E, that is the electronic charge. Though we'll be using E only. Minus I have written just to show it this that we are specifying it for electron. Velocity we have studied in current electricity that this is the drift velocity. Drift velocity is what? It's the velocity with which the electrons drift towards the positive terminal of the battery. That is drift velocity. So here the charge will be electronic charge, velocity will be drift velocity and V will be the magnetic force. That's what I've written magnetic force as minus E VD cross V. Now electron can be written as N into AL right for all the electrons that are present we can write it as al so total force on all the electrons if you have to find out total force or let me write it as f net total force that i have to find so if this is n this is a multiplied by l number density of electrons is given this is the number of electrons that are present here and the electronic this is for this is i have written number density that is number density now the number density of what electron so we'll add this electron over here. now this is giving me total electrons that are present number of all the electrons that are present nal was what and air was the number density that was present throughout. And number density of what electron? So multiplied by the electronic charge to get the value of charge. E means what? E means 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19. And this is what? Vd into... Now, if I just make some changes, if I just reverse certain things, let me bring Vd ahead. And let me shift length of the conductor over here. Can anyone tell what is this? N E A to drift velocity. Number density into electronic charge into area of cross section into drift velocity. N E A V D. 
what was this Yes, current asked. Right asked. So this is current. Remember, we had seen a formula of current. Current, there was a relation between drift velocity and electric current. So electric current was NEA into VD. VD is your drift velocity. So what is the formula of the force for a current carrying conductor we get? The net force we get, this is I L cross D. Now using this, this directly does not get used a lot. So we'll be using this more or less in our derivation. So how questions come? Question can come in this manner. See, length of the conductor is given as 10 meters. Current is given as 5 ampere. Magnetic field is given as 2 tesla, which is pointing inwards. You have to tell the magnetic and direction of force, magnitude and direction. So magnitude will be what? Length and magnetic field. Both are perpendicular to each other. So sine 90 will become 1. So BIL will become what? 10 into 5 into 2. This is how much? 100. 100. Newton and regarding the direction, place your what did we study in right hand thumb rule? Place your right hand along the direction of current, curl your fingers towards the direction of magnet field. Thumb gives you the direction of force, so this will be upwards. Upwards, you can write, or you can even write J cap. J cap will define that this is upwards. So, direction we have already studied. This is a very easy topic. BIL to remember. Let's just see one more question. Same thing here, the direction changes still. So F will be what? F will still be BIL. Magnetic field two, current is five, length is 10. So this becomes 100 Newton. Magnet uh, direction, current is moving upwards, but now magnetic field is outwards. So magnetic field is outwards. If I curl the fingers outwards, thumb is pointing towards the I cap. So 100 Newton I cap, which is towards the right. So this way you can use this force, BIL. Majorly this force gets uh, utilized when we have two parallel conductors that we'll see in the next class. So F is equal to I L cross B is there. You see the angle between the length and the magnetic field. If it is kept perpendicularly, so it, it is 90 degree. If it is parallel, then obviously it will be zero. Fine. So noted from here, any doubts you are having? Just let me know.
just text me done in the chat column when you have written it till here Others have also completed apart from Razan, Imad, and Asta. Mama, I'm doing the question too. I'll be done in a uh, minute. Um... Oh, just take two minutes. Mamba. So let's start with your test. You have half an hour duration. Zen, I think uh, you had not attended the classes, so. It's up to you. If you are able to solve it, you can stay and give the test. Otherwise, you can leave. So this is from your bio server slot topic. Only. So as soon as you people will be completing it on WhatsApp, you will converting it into the PDF and you will submit it. No, 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 no need to write the questions. Just put one, two and three and write whatever your answers. You were not informed about the test. Why, Mariam? You weren't attending the classes. The class last week only I announced this. Last week also I had announced this. Yesterday also I had announced this. Do one thing, Mariam. Take a screenshot of this page. Okay. Take a screenshot of this page. Just, just revise this topic and do it as, as an assignment. Then you can submit me later.
ma'am yes ma'am uh, all the questions are for how many marks each question okay i'll write down the marks sir i am writing it down see first question is for 3 marks second question is for 3 marks and the last question is for 4 marks so 3 3 4 Uh, yes, Aster. Ma'am, for the third question, we have to find the magnetic uh, magnitude of the magnetic field. Yes, yes, you have to find the magnetic induction at O means magnetic yes. induction means we'll see these terms in chapter number five. So this is basically a magnetic field only. So using all your, you just break it into three parts, one circular part, the other two, their wires having five ampere as the current. Fine? Okay, ma'am.
Mam. Submit it on the group.
Ma'am. Anushka has received your paper. You can leave. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Bye, ma'am. Last five minutes, hurry up. Uh, ma'am, do you get my paper? Okay, ma'am, I will see you can leave. Okay, thank you. Others also hurry up. Okay, Razan, I have received. You can leave. 